Hello community, today I want us to look at bank reconciliation and how it is done in ERP Next. Now first we need to understand what bank reconciliation is. And bank reconciliation simply means the process by which you compare the statement that has come from the bank with the statement that is showing in your accounting software. That is a definition by a software engineer, not by an accountant. Now, um, in ERP Next, we have two types of bank reconciliation. We have the manual bank reconciliation and we have the semi-automated bank reconciliation. Now, today I would like us to look at the semi-automated bank reconciliation and in between we may look at one or two things about the manual bank reconciliation process. Let's get started. So, in ERP Next, semi-automated uh, bank reconciliation uh, happens here. Let me show you. Here we have this banking, um, first of all I'm in the accounting module as you can see here on the left and here you can see we have banking and payments here. Now here we have a number of things. This is where we even enter the bank accounts. We enter the, uh, I mean the banks, we enter the bank account, we enter bank clearance, we enter uh, bank reconciliation, this is the tool itself and then here we have bank reconciliation statements and we have other records down there. Now, I have received questions from a number of people about the bank and bank account. Now, a bank is like that, uh, faci that uh, facility that provides you the banking services. An example of a bank in Kenya is Cooperative Bank or APSA Bank. And a bank in other countries, for instance, if let's say, for instance, you go to a country like Malta, an example of a bank there is the Bank of Valletta. Now, you may have a number of bank accounts in one bank. For instance, you may have two bank accounts in Cooperative Bank, three bank accounts in APSA and all that and that is where you need to have a bank and a bank account there right so in bank reconciliation here remember we are doing the manual uh, I mean I mean the semi-automated one and not the manual uh, this is where this happens so if for instance I click on bank reconciliation here I can see that I have one that uh, this is a, an instance that I had created if you don't see this just go ahead and fill the form that you see there with uh, the company it will come repopulated if you have a number of companies you can select your company there this is just my test company called Pearlsoft then you're going to need to select the bank account here so this is the bank account where you want to do um, a reconciliation on and then you need to select the period here if, for which period do you want to get this statement or this reconciliation done I have done January 1st to today's uh, to tomorrow's date or whatever you want to select there that's just a date range and then here you have something very important here. This is the closing balance for the bank account. So you will have the bank, uh, the closing balance that you have from the bank. All right. The closing balance as per ERP will be fetched automatically by the system from the chart of accounts. Let me show you. If I go here to the chart of accounts, uh, chart of accounts, and I type that, and then I let's say for instance I open all, the, all of this. I have bank, my banks here. You can see here I have this standard chartered bank account and my balance is showing us 18,500 all right if i go back to here you can see that is the balance that has been fetched for that bank account since it is what i have selected up here so closing balance as per erp will be fetched automatically by the system but then the closing balance as per bank statement you need to enter it here manually so if you change this for instance to something like 30,000 and then i save it this is going to change to 30,000 whatever is here you can see that so now here we can see i'm not going to change that necessary not necessary because i just need to show you how to to balance this amount so that here you have a difference of zero mine doesn't have to balance because this is just a test environment all right so if you see a balance here for instance here we can see we have a positive balance so we have more money in the bank apparently than we have in the erp so this could mean a number of things it could mean that there are checks that have been cleared by the bank that you have not marked as cleared in the system. Let me show you that. If we go back to uh, another tool that I want to show you, let me go back to the accounting module. You see here, in the banking and payment section that I showed you, we have this bank clearance section here. So if I click on this, this is going to show me, um, not this, sorry, not this, but, but instead I want, I want the bank reconciliation statement. The bank reconciliation statement report is what is going to show me whether I have any checks that have not been cleared yet. So let me reload this to be just to be sure. And you can see here I have a number of things. Here I have outstanding checks uh, and deposits to clear. And if you have checks that have not been cleared in the system, that amount is that amount is going to show here. If there isn't, then it means that is not where the problem is. 
The problem could be because now, I mean the problem uh, why you have a balance here, is not unclear checks, and that will mean that there are statements in the bank that you don't have in the ERP, and that is why now you need to upload a bank statement. We will come there. Let me go back first to this instance here, or to this scenario where you have uncleared checks. And let's just uh, generate one invoice and then leave it unclear so that you can see how we can clear that invoice in the system. So we go here, allow me to open another tab. And here I am going to go into the sales invoices section. And then from here, I will just duplicate one of these invoices. For instance, let, let's say I'm paying Frappe Cloud or something. So I'll duplicate this invoice. I don't need to change anything. Maybe I can just ch uh, change the uh, maybe the due date to be maybe today, and then that is three thousand. Or we can change this to something like three thousand five hundred. Doesn't matter. We save it, and then we go ahead and submit this invoice. So this invoice is expecting payment. So let's say we received this payment via check, and we have not cleared that check. So we go here, receive a payment, and then from here we need to select the mode of payment as check. And remember, this mode of payment, if we open that mode of payment, you will realize that, let me save it first. I need to, I need to enter the, um, the transaction, so let me, trans reference number, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, and maybe SD. And then let's say this, check, this payment has been received today, and then I save it. And what I wanted to show you is that the check that I have selected here, I want to show you that it has been mapped to receive the monies in the standard chartered account. So this is the mode of payment. The company, of course, is Superosoft. The mode of payment is check, and it has been mapped to standard chartered, all right? So that is the mode I have selected here. If I push that money ahead, so that payment has been received now, and I go back to this report. Remember the bank reconciliation report? And I reload this. There is now going to be an outstanding amount, um, an outstanding amount here. Let me, let me get that back and i open this a little bit uh, wider all right here we can see that we have outstanding checks and deposits to clear of 3500 so this is the check that we just entered and if we now go back to our reconciliation report you don't expect to see any balance in the in the amount that you have in your erp here so if you come here, the, the amount still remains as 18,500, although we have received a payment in the system. That is because that payment has not been cleared yet. So how do we clear it? Let me take you back to the accounting module, and now I will show you the functionality behind this bank clearance uh, link that we have here. So if I open this bank clearance, now I can go to um, a new record here, and then I can edit it. I will say that I want to get this from a payment entry, right? Payment entry. And I will take that specific payment entry. So let me just get a specific payment entry so that I can be able to receive that payment there. So I'll go to payment entries and my payment entry must be this one that was done one minute ago. And then the payment entry is 009. So I can even copy this number and then I can bring it here and paste it here. So this is my payment entry. And I'll tell it when this payment was cleared. So I'm just informing the system that, by the way, this payment entry that was received by a check, this check cleared today and the money is now in the bank. So when I do that, I just need to click on clear that. And that tells me that clearance date has been updated. And now when I go to this, first of all, I look at the bank reconciliation statement. I refresh. This, the, the amount that was here, outstanding checks uh, and deposits to clear, now goes to zero. And when I go to this, I'm expecting that 3,500 is going to be updated here once I reload this report. So when I do that, you can see this one now has been updated. So 18,500 plus 3,500 goes to 22,500. So this is now the money that is in our bank account. So that is in the event that you have not cleared checks. Now, what about when you need to update or upload a statement? Let's say, for instance, we have another invoice. Let's go and generate another invoice here. And we are going to generate the invoice for the remaining amount. So this is the 8,000 we have here. So um, I mean invoice. So, uh, so this is going to be a sales invoice. And then we are going to duplicate one of these invoices just to save our time. Right? 
so we duplicate this invoice and then the payment date let's just keep it as today and then we're going to change this amount from 3500 to 8000 or we can maybe change it to 7000 so the 7000 is so that we can still have a balance of 1000 here after we have reconciled this upload all right so we go ahead and save this and then we submit this record right so here we have a sales invoice who, which has not been paid yet so we go ahead and receive a payment against this sales invoice we can do this as was payment was done through wire transfer but then uh well i need to also provide the reference for that so maybe one two three four five six seven and this is today the transfer was done today but then there is something i want to show you also here before even before we go the wire transfer payment mode has also been linked to the bank account where we are receiving the money you can see that is standard chatter so you need, you need to make sure that it's linked properly and then you go ahead and click on submit so the payment has been received go back to your reconciliation report that money will not be here yet so you can see this still remains as 22,000 and that we still have a balance of 8,000 so let's say for instance we have received a statement from the bank and this payment entry is one of the one of the payments that has come from the bank so reconciliation on this one has not been done right so let me assume or let's assume that this is the statement that has come from the bank this is how the statement looks and we just enlarge it for the sake of your eyes and then let's change this last transaction here these are dummy transactions remember so we can just go ahead and modify it to receive seven thousand so we have this seven thousand as the payment we want to reconcile there so i have added a few more records here so that you can see where, how that looks in case you have a number of records coming from your bank so i'll go ahead and save that and then i'll minimize it and i'll go back to my bank reconciliation tool so in the bank reconciliation tool here i need to do an upload so let me go here and then this is this wants me to create a new record that is fine i can go ahead and save it and then this allows you to do a number of things you can attach a file or you can download the template i would prefer that you go ahead and first download the template if you have the template so here is our template i mean if you want the template then you can check it this is how the template looks so the template expects you to provide a date of the transaction a deposit so this is, this is just an example a withdraw if there are withdrawals um, a, a description of whatever happened there a reference number of course every transaction will come with a reference number and then the bank account this is very very important because of course that is where the transactions will go that's the bank account name and then the currency of that of the of the money that was received so if for instance you have a statement from the bank that does not look like this you you have two options you can decide to map the headers of your um, of your of your statement to look like this or you can just go ahead and upload that statement as is here so go ahead and attach it and select your statement my statement is this one for instance and then upload now in my case the statement will just pick and show me the transactions here as they look on the excel sheet or on the csv that we are uploading which is this one here in my case but in your case if the columns or the headers are not the same by that i mean if the headers are not looking like this the, st the system will complain to you that it's not able to match the records and then there is this map columns button that shows up here so if you click on that you can go ahead and map these columns you can see mine has been mapped automatically because they are they are matching and then you can go ahead and click on submit there so that's going to do that and then you can go ahead and click on start import so when you click on start import mine shows a success here so you can see all the transactions have been mapped successfully and imported into the system now these transactions are normally imported um on 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 on, on the bank transaction record so if we open a new tab here just to show you and then we look at bank transaction list you can see here we have these transactions showing up here they have been uploaded now that is where those transactions go all right so now if we go back to our import then we go back to the bank reconciliation statement this is how it looks we still have our balance here so the closing bank uh, balance as per erp is twenty-two thousand. 
and then the difference is 8k remember we have just approved this 7000 no we have approved this bank statement and we want to map this payment entries that are from the bank with some of the payment entries that are in our system that have been not been mapped properly so here on the 7000 we want to map remember we, we remember we have this payment entry in the system let me just show you just to recap uh, if i go to payment entry payment entry here you can see here we have this payment entry that we did for 7000 it has not been mapped so if we go back to accounting software and we go to um, i mean to accounting module and we go to uh, bank reconciliation statement we can see that we have this 7000 that has not been cleared yet so how do we clear this 7000 we don't want to clear it through the bank clearance we want to clear it through a bank reconciliation so we go here and then we click on actions when we click on actions with the payment entry selected here we can see the 7000 has already been mapped down here so we can go ahead and map directly the 7000 um this 7000 let me open up this we can map this 7000 with this payment entry down here all right this payment this payment entry can be mapped with this uh this pay entry or this transaction from the bank here so on the actions you can map that now this provides you a number of things so, so you can filter by sales invoice you can filter by expense so every time you click it filters this it, it adds a filter to this record and then it picks the records that have not been mapped now notice up here you have an action so in this action you have create voucher you can, so you can go ahead and create a voucher that you can go ahead and map against this 7000 that is you are going to select the party you are going to select the uh, enter the check number and then uh the part this is the party type and the party and then you're going to select the payment mo uh, uh the mode of payment and then the cost center not necessary you must not enter the call center and then you can go ahead and submit this and it's going to clear this payment the other option here is to update bank transaction so that this bank transaction can also be updated with some records like the party type and then you select the party and then you can go ahead and, uh, and update that so today we want to match against our voucher and the voucher is the payment entry and this is the payment entry we want to match against against um against our, our our transaction here and then we click on submit once we click on submit this record is supposed to vanish from the system this number five here the seven thousand is supposed to vanish from these transactions that are showing here that have not been reconciled so let's go let's go ahead and click that and now you notice 7000 is no longer in that list number one and then when we go to this payment this uh, report here and we click on uh, this action button you can see now the 7000 has also vanished from this so it has been reconciled properly and now when we go to our bank reconciliation report and we reload this bank reconciliation report the 22,000 is going to be uh, to change to 22,000 plus 7,000, which is now 29,000. Then now we can see that the amount that has not been reconciled yet is this 1,000. So that is how you do bank reconciliation in ERP Next. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop them on the comment section, or you can reach me through my blog at codewithkarani.com, and I will answer those questions. Remember, we are also an ERP consulting company called Upeosoft. And we provide, this is our company, it's upeosoft.com, like that. We provide ERP Next consultancy services. We are also software engineers and we are also Frappe partners, certified Frappe partners. So for any queries about ERP Next, about Frappe development or business side, feel free to contact us. We are willing to help you in your journey. Thank you so much and I hope to see you in my next video.